Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, right now, what you see me doing is I'm going through and I'm just touching up everything with the stock uh, Mazda Blue. That's the original body color. Um, anything that I had to fix or need to spot it in, I'm doing so right now. I'm doing um, this in a fast motion just because I'm trying to keep the overspray to the bare minimum. Um, so what I'm doing is moving pretty quickly. Even though the video is sped up, you're not going to really get that gist of how fast I am moving. But I'm trying to keep that overspray to a very minimum around the uh, body of the truck because I don't want that to go anywhere else besides where I'm putting it. So I got my gun dialed down as well as the air pressure is turned down and I'm moving very, very fast. So um, that is what I'm doing here. It takes about four or five coats of this blue. It's a really transparent blue. So it takes me a lot to go around and touch all this stuff up and get it ready before we actually go back through, tack it off again and start laying the graphics out. Alright, so we got the regular um, stock body blue color covered. Um, went over all the silver stripes that he wanted to cover up, which was just a pinstripe. So, um, and then blended it all back in. Did the back side of the rail as well. And then fixed the pockets that had the damage inside of them on both sides. Um, so I got all that fixed, came out really, really good. Um, when you're doing something like this, that's already pretty much cleared, um, you can get away with a lot, um, just because it's, you know, you're just sanding down the clear and it, it'll actually fade into the original, um, body of the color really, really well, just cause how slick it is, how clean it is. So, um, it's pretty easy to do it. Um, just make sure, um, you probably saw me kind of fan everything out. You don't want to make anything hard line, so you want to make sure um, that what you're painting, you're giving yourself enough room to blend that out, just like I did here. You can kind of see on the paper, you know, how far I blended out right here. Um, and then I did the same thing on the side because when they butted up together, um, you want to make sure the color is gonna, you know, look right all together. So just make sure you're blending your stuff out. That way it is going to look good when you butt everything back up. Same thing with this side. You can tell by the paper here how far out I blended. Um, same way right here, how far I blended. And I just kind of blended it up um, to make everything blend smooth. And it's going to be an easy, nice, smooth transition. When you go to clear it, you will not be able to tell that any of that happened. Um, this stock color blue on this uh, truck it's really, really transparent, so it took a lot of layers to, to build it up. Um, and, you know, you almost want to use a dark sealer when you're doing this. Um, and that's what I used when I first painted this truck was a dark, darker sealer. You'd almost use black against this uh, color um, because, you know, the darker the sealer, um, if your color is really transparent, the quicker it's going to cover. If the, if the sealer is going to be like a white or a light gray, it's going to take a lot of coats to cover it on a really transparent color. So you just got to, you got to make sure you know what you're, you're doing when it comes to the colors. Um, and you know, obviously, um, don't want to sit there forever and just keep pounding color on. But inside of here, I kind of had to do that because obviously you're working with a really tight space, trying to not, trying not to get color all the way around here. Um, only in the areas and then you just kind of want to blend it out. Um, I do got a little bit of overspray I need to fix right here. Um, once it's fully dries and before I clear it, I can actually take, that's another good thing about working with something that's already clear coated. Um, if there's any type of overspray anywhere, um, you can just take some thinner and just kind of wipe it off. It'll come right off without damaging anything. So you can do that. Or you can go through and you can kind of just nib it with some sandpaper. Because um, I'll probably have to do that on some of this stuff in here. Um, where the tape's not really holding up really well. So I might have to take some thinner right here and just kind of clean that up. But um, that's part of the, you know, part of the cleanup stages. Obviously it's 
something like this, like right here is what I'm talking about. You get, you can see a little bit of overspray in that yellow from the blue from doing the insides of here. So it's really hard to tape something like that up. You can either, like I said, take some thinner and barely wipe it and it'll come off. Or you can just simply retouch it up with some pinch striping um, and that'll work fine as well. So pick, pick and choose your battles, pretty much what you wanna do. Um, but yeah, everything's blended out really nicely. Um, once this fully dries, it should be dry here in a little bit. Um, I can take the paper off of it and then um, what I'll do is I'll probably tack everything back down, get all this blue overspray off everywhere before it actually sits on there and dries. And then um, we could put the bed back where the bolts need to go and be ready for graphics. So um, yeah, so we'll be doing that here shortly is uh, laying some tape, getting this thing laid out. And this is with the bed back into its original spot. As you can see, it's a really, really tight fit inside there, just the way this, this bed on these trucks line up. But you can no longer see the silver stripe, which is what we want. And we wanted to blend everything back in, because like I said before in the last video, I did not originally paint back here. So the color was just a little bit different, like a shade off. And you can kind of tell when it was out in the sun, but other than that, it was hard to tell. But the customer, uh, wanted it just to be blended since we are redoing the whole, you know, we're going to be re-clearing the whole truck anyway. So that's why we went ahead and did that. So yeah, everything is back lined up and ready to be tacked off and start laying some fine line tape. So this process is going to take a little bit longer, but, um, it is finally ready to be, um, taped off. So yeah. Um, I'll do that, um, kind of show you guys my method of how I do that. Like I said, I've already got the pre-rendered drawings that I did, so I'll be going off of that um, and taking you guys along the way of how I actually tape out these graphics. You might seem, it might look complicated, but once you start doing it, that's the hardest part of getting started. Once you get started, you just get in the zone, you just start taping off, so that's what we're going to do next. So right here, I'm just kind of explaining um, the different types of fine line that I use. Um, I mainly stick to an eighth inch and a sixteenth inch. Um, J tape is the name of the orange, and the green is uh, FBS custom tape. So um, just sit back and enjoy. Okay, so this is what we got going on here. Um, it looks kind of like a mess right now because nothing's uh, taped off fine line and all the other graphics are coming through it. Um, I have yet razor bladed any of the extra tape that I don't need, so we're gonna do that as well. Um, but I wanna show you guys just the, the design itself. Um, you got this big old streaking that comes kind of to a point right here, comes back up to a point up here, and then it kind of hides behind this other graphic going down as this one's going back up. Um, it gets skinnier, it's fatter at the bottom. Um, so that's pretty much how I go about taping everything off. Obviously I've done the drawing, I know where everything's placed. That gives me a really good head start. Um, if I was just doing this um, solely off of just laying tape and going from um, one edge to the next trying to figure it out it would take me probably hours to figure this out but since i've already done that drawing and that design it made it much more easier because i know exactly where everything lays out so i want to go through next i'm going to take a razor blade and i'm going to just clip off all this extra tape going up and down here um, because the way that this shows that i've drew it up is it goes behind this green lick right here so this section of color this section of graphic right here will be behind this green and then it goes behind this other graphic going up and it kind of just hides itself behind it 
and then you can see it peek back out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all this and I'm gonna make it to where everything's taped off the way that we had it picture wise because these graphics just don't sit on top. They go in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, I've got some more holes that I uh, did on this silver. It's gonna be, there's gonna be some up here and there's gonna be a couple down here. So this graphic is gonna go in and out of this hole. Um, so there's a lot going on with this, just rather than sticking it on top and putting color on it, calling a day and pinstriping it. Um, so there's a lot more masking to do and I'm gonna show you guys how I go about doing that. But first we're gonna razor blade the extra tape. At this point, we are now ready to start trimming. Um, just any of the excess tape needs cut off and I'm simply just showing you guys um, how to do that. Um, anytime you guys are taking um, a blade against a vehicle, make sure it is brand new and um, it has that really nice sharp edge it's just a lot easier to cut the, t uh, the tape without actually scarring the paint. And once that trimming is done, um, the next step is to go along and outline all the fine line tape we just laid down um, because there will be a time where we will be masking this off. So just going around outlining it will make it a lot easier um, to mask off. And you just want to make sure that fine line tape is locked down for the long haul. Um, because we are going to be doing the rest of the truck before we put paint on this area So you just want to make sure that fine line tape is going to stay there for a long period of time So just make sure you just go around with the three quarters like I'm doing right now and lock in those um, fine line tape So that pretty much wraps up the hood portion of it right now. For right now, until I go through and fine line everything, um, you can kind of see I'm going to get you guys a better, closer look here. So, sorry about my hand being away, but you kind of get a better look. It still looks kind of crazy and a mess, but it kind of gives you that look of how things are going to end up shaping up. So up here, the holes are gonna be here. This is gonna go on top and then inside the hole. So some of this back here, like this portion probably, back will be masked off. Same way with this portion, probably right somewhere in between here will be masked off. That way it goes inside the hole and you can kind of just make it disappear. And then you can kind of see what I did right here is I just went through and I refined my hand pinch right but there's some of it that was kind of crazy looking to me so i went through there and just you know fixed all that because this is all going to get paint so all this other extra stuff is going to get covered up when we spray that silver 
all this this up here as well is going to get all covered up so um, this is the time to where I can go back through it and just fine line or uh, you know kind of just go through and fine line everything that I want to fix and cover up and not cover up so makes it really really nice to be able to do that and then it comes back down here comes back up disappears like I said we'll be cutting this out everything will get silver lines going back down on both sides and then this is going to be a different color going all the way down and this other graphic that kind of starts up here it's going to kind of finish underneath on the back side of this other color so it's going to be kind of crazy because they are going to get pinstriped on both of them so this graphic in particular is going to have a kind of like a teal not kind of as bright as this but it's going to be a little bit more like a baby blue teal if that makes any sense so it's going to have this pinstripe riding a line on top of this other graphic and then it's going to have another pinstripe coming up here and i believe we chose just a straight red for this pinstripe on this graphic that one the big one going through but until we get the rest of the truck done i'm not really worried about it so yeah that's just how it's going to get worked out guys um uh, that's the hood by itself. I will end up, when I get the rest of the truck fine lined and outlined exactly like this, I'll go back through and I'll put down paper and plastic and cover everything before I paint it, everything, obviously, to keep it nice and clean. You don't want overspray everywhere you don't want overspray. But next up, I'm going to start on the sides. So next video coming up, it's going to be the exactly like this, but it'll probably be a time lapse. That way you guys know how I laid everything out. I can just run a time lapse on the rest of it and get it done that way for you. That way I'm not boring any of you guys. Sometimes some of the stuff can get pretty boring, um, especially if you're just sitting there watching it. Um, but hopefully that helps some of you out on how to go through and mask off graphics. Like I said, it's not really that hard. Um, this was actually really, really quick for me. I got this done in probably 35, 45 minutes. Um, on the timer right now, it's got 27 minutes. So it's really, really quick just because I've already done the hard work of putting the, the time and the effort into doing the drawing on the computer. So it made it really, really easy. So I'm really excited about starting the side because the side's going to go the same way, even though it's a really huge panel because um, we're doing the, pretty much the whole side of the truck. Um, it's going to take more time because of that, but laying out everything, it's going to fly by. I mean, I don't know, some of you guys that watch this do this for a living as well, and you know what I'm talking about as far as laying out graphics, and you're doing it just by hand, freehand tape. You don't have anywhere to go. You don't know what you're doing until you just lay the tape the way you want it and the way you want it looked so there's a lot of time wasted just by ripping up the tape putting new down ripping up tape until you get it to where you exactly want it so if you're one of those people that <laughs> do this for a living too you know what i'm talking about as far as how much time and effort it takes to get that that right curve or the t the fine line to do exactly what you want and get that that really nice um curve going on your graphic because a lot of times it's especially when you're doing a large panel smaller panels aren't as bad because you can just lay them out and the tape does what you want it to do but when you do like really large sides of, of vehicles or like a large panel you gotta you gotta follow that curve all the way to the end so it gets a little bit trickier but um, this gives you guys just like I said it gives you an idea of how I go about doing it and if you, you are doing this for a living just like me, you understand what I'm talking about because I don't think a lot of people understand how much time and effort goes into just laying graphics. You know, it's not, we're not printing out vinyl stickers and decals and putting them on and clearing them or whatever. You know, you can print out your own stencil, you know, if you got a plotter big enough and you got um, stencil paper big enough to where you can draw something and just have the computer cut out and stick it on the side of the vehicle and paint it. I've seen it done that way too, um, but that almost takes two or three people to lay out because you gotta get everything laid out perfectly straight on both sides. But fine line game is, it takes a while. I ain't gonna lie, it takes a while to get used to 
um, especially when you're doing multiple graphics. And in this case, I've never done this to where I've painted something and then had to go back in, redesign more graphics for the customer, and then work around what's already on the truck that you've already done in the past. So this is a new one for me. So you guys are gonna come along for the ride though. I think it's gonna come out really, really cool. It's gonna give the red truck, especially in this area right here, you know, I love the way it looks right now because it's got that retro vibe to it, that old 2000s, late 90s look to it. But this area right here, for some reason, it just, it's too open for me. It's really busy up here. It gets kind of busy right here, and there's nothing really right here. And then the back, it gets kind of busier again. So this graphic that we're going to be finishing on the side, it fills up everything right here. And then it gives a little bit of something something back here so it really flows in well with everything and, it, and it's just going to be total chaos from the front to the back all the way around the back to the tailgate and the hood as well we're also doing a custom cow panel where it's going to be completely shaved we're going to actually cut these wiper arms off and we're going to use the middle one only it's going to be completely smooth we're going to paint it this blue and then we're going to continue the graphics onto that. He doesn't want to do the roof anymore. I was going to do the roof for him and make him come all the way back and flow him back in the back of the cab. But he doesn't want to do that now. He just wants to do the cow panel, which is fine. Some guys like to do that. Some guys don't. Some guys like to bring him down to the front of the bumper. Some guys don't. I think with just doing the cow panel... And continuing all the graphics onto that, even though it's a really small, you know, it's not really not that wide, but it just gives it a continuance of the graphics, um, which is going to be really cool. It's going to really change the look of this truck along with the side of it. So I'm really excited. Hopefully you guys as well. Um, sorry about the delay and videos. I've had a lot of personal stuff happen. Um, so we're just going to keep going with the flow i'll try to get videos out as quickly as possible and teach you guys a little bit of something along the way so just sit tight because things are moving and just at a slower pace than what i thought so but yeah the next video is going to be laying out the rest of the graphics on the side and teaching you guys and showing you how i transfer from one side to the other without really going back and having because you got two sides of a car so you got to match it when you lay one side out, you got to match the other side. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that as well. So there's a lot, a lot of coming, guys. So I appreciate you watching. Make sure if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And then, uh, yeah, make sure you put down, a, put down a comment or two. You know, there's not a lot of people talking on the comment section. So put some comments down there. If you do this, um, kind of put your two cents, how you do it, you know, as far as taping. And masking goes if you got a better way or if you got anything else knowledge wise you want to share put it down there in the comment section you know we're all here to learn there's might be somebody out there that does this a lot better than i do this is just how i've done it for many many years so i'm just comfortable so yeah not afraid to learn something new so but yeah appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you on the next one